Yeah. You similarly have a uh, mathematical, statistical kind of mind. And I'm wondering, Mr. Butler, if you run through the same uh, insane uh, process that I do with very simple things like, oh, I'm, I'm going to go to um, the the convenience store to get like uh, something basic, like I'm going to go get like a coconut water or whatever. Well, if I go to this convenience store, um, then there's X probability that I run into so-and-so who I don't want to see. If I go <laughs> to this other convenience store, maybe it's an extra block or so, but my odds of seeing that person are greatly uh, diminished. Do you probabilize your life with, with similar uh, type things of uh, maybe not to the insane extent that I do, where it's like, I legitimately did this throughout college and still my daily life, although I have maybe less enemies now, I'm more chilled out, but it's like, man, if I go that way, there's a 20% chance I see this person and I really don't want to see, or like go to this bar versus that bar. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you probabilize little uh, events in your life? So that's kind of like an, an insurance payment. If it costs you a little more, a little bit longer of a walk, like you're willing to pay that insurance to avoid the, the situation. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the, the funniest one that I heard recently was from my little brother. He's like, inflation is, he's like, inflation's so easy to battle at Starbucks. Like if you're going to buy a grande coffee, or maybe if you're going to buy a, a larger than grande, I don't know what the term is, unfortunately, but <laughs> larger than grande coffee, um, just buy the grande and ask for light ice or no ice. And you basically get the same amount of, of coffee without paying more. And you like, that's how you fight inflation. I'm like, wow, you're, you're just a little genius, huh? So yeah, like little stuff like that, I definitely run through. Um, and just random, like, we'll, we'll talk about this in a second, but like sports odds and things like that. Like I basically just decide in my mind if it's something that uh, I think is feasible or maybe a little, little lower, a little higher, and then you take the other side. That's, that's how I kind of, uh, run into these things more often than not. But I, I gotta say the Starbucks hack to fight inflation, uh, write that one down. Cause you know, <laughs> I was going to say that's, penny somewhere. <laughs> that's more of just like a, a straight up hack. Like yeah. I'm talking like probabilities <laughs> of like, Oh, if I go to this Starbucks, mm -hmm. there's a 30% chance that they give me yeah more coffee than, than this Starbucks. But uh, th there are odds to it. That's just like a straight up edge <laughs> in life. Um, but yeah, th you don't have to necessarily turn all the events in your life, going to the store, going to the bar, going to whatever. Oh, this restaurant, I've got a 3% chance of getting food poisoning. This other one, it's only 1% chance, but the food isn't as good. You know, like little stuff like that, that goes through Frank's crazy mind. You can, at least though, you probably should be turning events in the market into probabilities. And yes, yeah, sports gambling is a big one. And I always, I love this example here because assigning probabilities to things are great when it comes to trading and everything else, but probabilities change and you have to be aware of that. You have to be ready for it. And also that's, it's, it's a really good thing to know that probabilities are so dynamic because that's where you can spot really great trades that we'll get to in a second. And this is a classic one, Super Bowl 51. The Pats go down by a couple of touchdowns and it's halftime, Mike Butler. And the odds that the Falcons are going to beat the Pats is close to 100%, like 95%. And when you read that, and I think a lot of people look at a probability like that and, and assume like, oh, since it's greater than you know 60 or 70%, whatever, it's over with. Um, and, and I think that's a dangerous thing to do. And you could see here when you're playing against Tom Brady, it's especially dangerous because New England comes back and wins. Um, but but I just point this out because turning events into probability is very, very important. But when an event has a probability of 60%, 70%, 80%, you can't just take for granted that it's over, right? We've all sold puts with you know a 90% probability of profit and it ends up being in the money and you have to defend that position. Uh, these probabilities are, are really helpful, but they're not for certain, right? Correct. And I think that's the biggest thing is just understanding um, that probabilities will uh, 
come into play, especially like you said, 90% chance that it's going to remain out of the money. That means 10% of the time you're going to be in the money. And it, over the course of a thousand occurrences, that's a hundred times where it's not perfect. Although most of the time, well, more, well over most of the time, you're going to have an option that expires out of the sure. money. Um, and I think what's interesting about this is a lot of people ask us, um, and I'm sure you too, whether it's creating a new trade or adjusting a trade. Uh, I think a lot of people get into this analysis paralysis when they could just look at the current probabilities of X product reaching a certain point. Uh, and I think that's something that can simplify a lot of these decisions that we have to make. Like if you if you want to short the small dollar or you want to uh, execute the trade that we just did. Like, where? What are the probabilities telling us that the range is for these specific products? And mm -hmm. that might help you structure your particular trade a little bit more intelligently than just doing it blindly. Absolutely, so helpful for so many different things. Trade setup, or yeah, where where should I realistically manage a trade? If like, oh, I'm going to take this trade. Uh, until it's uh, you know all the way it's fallen from a hundred dollars to eighty dollars. Well, if the option delta on the eighty strike is less than five, then you have a less than five percent chance that that market gets down there. Is that really realistic? So helpful probabilities in so many different ways. Um, and I wanted to bring up the recent market where probabilities have really been shifting. Interest rates. You can see here the Fed funds futures. Uh, they are number one for sure, when it comes to being able to project what the Fed is going to do in the future. And a really great example here in what is the, the Fed interest rate going to be by the end of 2022, you can see back in just a year ago, summer of 2021, the projection was less than 1%. Up here in this range is saying less than 1%. In the start of this year, you know, it's one to two percent. Now it's all the way down to three and a half percent, more than three percent by the end of 2022. Just a great example of how probabilities shift. And you look at these projections, and this was the projection of where interest rates would be December 2022, just last week, where they were projected. And you can see, oh, the big, you know, almost 50 percent is at 350 basis points or three and a half percent. You fast forward just one week and this 50% has shifted down to three and a quarter. These probabilities change every passing week. And, and I, I don't want people to you know, take these odds as, oh, that's where the odds currently are. That's what has to happen. If anything, I like to take odds like this and you're looking for the edge. I know you do a lot of, you know, uh, you look at different golf tournaments and you're looking at, oh, this guy's 12 to one, this guy's 20 to one or whatever. Yeah, sure. The guy with the best odds is the most likely to win, but the best trade is where you can see some value or an inefficiency. And I think this is a right market here for you to look at, uh, which is interest rates because- uh, the best market for spotting inefficiencies is the one that's moving around the most. And right now, if you think that three and a half percent by the end of the year is not high enough, inflation crazy, then you should be buying this S2Y future. If you think that three and a half percent is you know too much, and they're going to rein it in closer to you know two percent or two and a half percent. Uh, by the end of 2022, then you could be selling these futures and using these probabilities to let you know what the current status is, what the current projected outcome is. But the best trade is is spotting that inefficiency, uh, right, Mike Butler? Because I'm sure you know plenty of people that get started in something like sports gambling. They just bet the favorite every time because they think, oh, the favorite is the most likely outcome. That's what's going to happen 100% of the time when realistically, I mean, you see these odds shifting around. I mean, this is these are huge, huge moves. Uh, and sometimes you can get that guy at 20 to one. Yeah. And that's why I love these interest rate trades because interest rates, the historical relationship between the two-year, 10-year, and 30-year, when they go inverted, like we know at some point, uh, they they have shown historically that they will uninvert. And that those are the opportunities where we can get into uh, those types of spreads. And then we can look at the pairs trade feature and graph the relationship and say, and see, okay, the price right now is, is 10. It was 400 a month ago. I'm going to shoot for the middle and my target's going to be $200 out of this pairs trade. Like these, and even if we're wrong, 
we know that we have a high probability of these things working out. Uh, it's kind of unlike the equity space where a stock can just skyrocket and never come back down. At least with these probabilities, we have some relationships attached to them. Uh, but yeah, finding the opportunities comes with patience and the understanding of these markets, but um, having the ability to understand that the probabilities may not always pan out in the near term or even the midterm or long term. But if you have the eye for these opportunities, you can uh, throw them on and, and hopefully make some money from, with them. Yeah, truly in closing there, that the best trades, the best traders are the ones who are able to look at the probabilities and say, oh, that's efficient. All right, there's no trade there. Or say, hey, that looks mispriced. But yeah, you get into real uh, hot water when you start to say, oh, the highest probability thing happens every single time. Uh, it, it, it just doesn't. Uh, but you can set yourself up with higher probability trades. All of that said, Mike Butler, thanks so much for everything you've said today. Always a pleasure having you on. Everybody, thanks so much for watching Small Stakes. We'll be back with more tomorrow. But stay tuned. Splash in the Futures is coming up next. Have a great night, everybody. Peace.